Welcome back, beautiful Tri-State area. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Up next in our Going Deep segment, we're featuring Dr. Corinne Lal. He currently services patients in Scottsdale, Arizona, as well as New York City. He's a double board certified dermatologist who specializes in pediatric and adult dermatology, laser surgery, soft tissue filler augmentation, body sculpting, and pigmentary abnormalities of the skin. Dr. Lal has a very specific interest in men's aesthetic prejuvenation and healthy skin aging. He's been featured in many media publications, including Elle, Harper's Bazaar, and Marie Claire. He's even on the medical advisory board for Elle Magazine and Prevention Magazine. He's the only fellowship-trained pediatric and cosmetic dermatologist in the United States. That's so cool. Today, he joins me to chat carbon dioxide therapy for skin rejuvenation, ablative laser skin resurfacing, recovery periods, and why he chooses this procedure for his patients. We're also going to get his take on his go-to non-invasive procedures and the latest innovations in pediatric dermatological skin care. Welcoming now to the show is my expert on the microphone, Dr. Karen Lau. Welcome to the show, superstar. Thank you for having me. How are you doing? I'm doing great. So excited to chat with you. So first, I'd like to set the tone and briefly chat about carbon dioxide therapy for skin rejuvenation. It's a treatment that has been around since the 1930s. But to my understanding, the method of delivery has improved since then with a gel delivery system called CO2 lift. Can you explain what carboxytherapy is and what it entails and how it differs from other rejuvenation techniques? Yeah, so carbon dioxide therapy, also known as carboxytherapy, basically relies on putting carbon dioxide on the skin. And when you do that, it's kind of like you're taking away, you know, oxygen from the skin. And so what happens is as a response to the carbon dioxide on the skin, your body makes a lot of oxygen and brings a lot of blood and oxygen to the areas where the carbon dioxide is applied. So the carboxytherapy mask is kind of like a combination of, you know, a wound care treatment, hyperbaric oxygen treatment. It just brings a lot of oxygen into the skin. And when we do that, blood flow increases. You'll see lifting hydration. You know, hydration is seen up to 117%. And the skin just feels very nice and hydrated and lifted. I love what you just said. It's non-invasive yeah. as well, right? Non-invasive, not painful, doesn't sting, super soothing. Um, you can do it alone. You can do it in intimate areas. Um, I have a lot of patients that use it in the vaginal area. They actually have a specific, you know, CO2 lift for that area. Um, for a lot of, um, you know, men, you can use it on the buttock area, on the genital area, on the penile area, if you have sensitivities, irritation. Um, and the difference between this and other treatments is you get an immediate response, you know? So uh, there's no real other carboxy therapy treatment on the market. Um, this is kind of like the only one. And the good thing is, it's something you can do at home. It's safe for all skin types. There's no downtime. You can do it right after a procedure, before a procedure, and it just really overall enhances the experience of whatever you're trying to do for your skin. Uh, it, it sounds like a uh, like magic in a bottle for for a, a non-invasive facelift. I love what you're saying. So I'm now that you've set the tone for for carbon dioxide therapy for skin rejuvenation, which we will circle back to in just a little bit. Now we're going to talk about lasers now. So unless my audience has been living under a rock for the past few years, which they have not, they're probably aware of the number of fields that laser therapy is being used in, including skin care. By precisely removing the dead and redundant skin layer by layer, laser skin resurfacing helps make your skin appear younger and healthier. And the best thing about these procedures is that they can either be performed on their own or with other cosmetic surgeries. Now, as a specialist in pediatric and adult dermatology, why do you believe fully ablative resurfacing is a valuable option for your patients? Well, you know, fully ablative resurfacing for most is considered an old school technique. And the reason is because it's a very aggressive treatment. Not a lot of people do full ablative resurfacing anymore. They've transitioned into fractional ablative resurfacing because there's less downtime. It's safer on all skin types. Um, you know, it's there's less room for error. I, on the other hand, trained, you know, on fully ablative resurfacing. And in Arizona, a lot of my patients have a lot of sun damage. My average patient is in the 60s. And so really, you know, to get the best bang for your buck, you want to do something that's going to do the best thing. Fully ablative resurfacing is when we use the top, we remove as many layers of skin as we want. You can do that with an erbium laser or with a CO2 laser. 
Um, the benefits are we're removing sun damaged skin. So for people that have a lot of pre skin cancers, brown spots, redness, roughness, crepiness, all of that will be gone. Fully ablative resurfacing allows for a longer duration of response. So if I do one aggressive treatment, results last for like five years. So it's not wow. something you have to keep on doing over and over again. But it's also not for someone who can't tolerate appropriate wound care. And that's why, you know, carboxy therapy and post-operative wound care and instructions and close contact is very important. It's a high-risk procedure. I probably do four cases a week. Um, and it's the most rewarding procedure that I do. In kids, we do fully ablative resurfacing for certain birthmarks that are very elevated um, and have texture compared to the regular skin. So we can kind of pare them down with the laser to get rid of them. It, it feels like it's a, a multi-use tool, uh, not just for adults, but for children as well. But the takeaway is in the proper hands. And we know that not all skin tones and shades react to lasers the same way. There was There's something that you are familiar with, the audience may or may not be, but it's the Fitzpatrick scale. It's used by dermatologists to get an idea about how different types of colored skin will respond to UV light. And this scale ranks from one to six, with one being the lightest color and six being the most melanin, right? And even mm -hmm. though it's possible to use any category of lasers on any skin tone, I always say it's imperative that you remain mindful of doing so. And the more pigmented the skin, the higher the risk of that person experiencing more darkness and blotchiness and brown spots, even if that's what they want to treat in the first place. So it, it scares me when I see, you know, doctors who are not trained in using these, ve these very, very specific lasers. And I love it that you you wrote the book on this. You, you, you are the one that has, to my understanding, uh, put a great deal of education in the way that you conduct your, your practice and you yourself. So I take my hat off to you because this is, this is no easy feat to get the results you want carefully. Oh, a hundred percent. And you know, the thing is really, you know, the, it's all about communication and understanding that post, you know, whatever I do in the office, is my responsibility, but there's also the patient's responsibility. And so you need to have close contact. Like my patients have my cell phone number. I'm like, I want you to text me when you get home, when you get up in the morning, three hours after that, what do you do? I need to know because there's a lot of room for error even once they're done with me. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Now let's kind of tie this back. So in your practice, how do you determine when laser resurfacing is the preferred treatment compared to other available options? But more importantly, how do you combine this in the combo therapy with CO2 lift? So the thing is, CO2 lift is great because you can use it with any treatment. You can use it with BBL, which is broadband light. You can use it with the halo, which is a dual non-ablative ablative laser. You can use it after radiofrequency microneedling, plain microneedling after chemical peels, fully ablative resurfacing. It really has no limits and it's safe for all skin types. So I kind of determine, you know, I give people multiple options because, you know, there's multiple ways to skin a cat. You can do <laughs> fractional ablative resurfacing. It just may take more treatments. You can do radiofrequency microneedling. That will help build collagen, but won't really do anything for the surface of the skin. Or we can do fully ablative resurfacing. Um, and so I really kind of target the treatment, give people options, discuss the pros, cons, downtime, potential risks first. And then once they're like, listen, I want longevity. I want to do one treatment. That's what we're going to do. So I discussed to them that, like I said, what I do in the office is great, but what you do at home is even more important. So I like for people to get the CO2 lift and use it on their skin because in my office, I can cr control their pain with, you know, cooling, ice packs, um, you know, sprays. We can do a lot of other things. And, you know, sometimes we do PRP, but it's really hard to get a blood stick sometimes. It's an, you know, it's painful to get a blood drawn after you've had your face blown off. And so, you know, the CO2 lift is a great alternative for me because PRP is um, great for wound healing. So carboxy therapy, in my opinion, has kind of replaced that because it's easier. I don't need to stick a patient and they can use it right after the treatment. I like for people to do this basically daily once they're home for about five days. Truly, that takes them the swelling, the redness, the pain, the itching um, and gives them a more comfortable response. They also kind of like the experience of how it feels. You know, people like to do things. So when they have something to do, you know, we're going to get a good outcome. Definitely. And I've personally tried the product CO2 Lift Pro. I explanted my breast implants December 18th. And so I just did a natural lift. So I've been using it on my scars and it's phenomenal. You you nailed it. You said it right on. Right on. It's We love the feeling. 
And so like you're saying, like, you know, in those areas where you've had surgeries and things like that, it's great for wound healing. Um, and that's a really hard thing to do. You know, after you've had surgery, not a lot of things feel good, you know what I mean? Or have a lot of evidence. Um, but when you're yeah. going to do something that's harmless, you're not going to be allergic to it. It's safe on that inflamed, you know, you can use it on open wounds, you know, yeah. and it truly brings a lot of oxygen to the area. So same reason why they have one for the vaginal area, right? For vaginal rejuvenation, non-invasive, we're hydrating that tissue that gets dry over time. Yeah, it definitely, we're speaking the same language here. Now, as a member of the medical advisory boards for L and prevention magazines, what trends or innovations do you foresee shaping the future of pediatric dermatological skin care? It's interesting to me as a mom. Well, right now, teen and tween skin care is all over the place. So kids come into the office, they're going on TikTok, they're buying the snail mucin, they're buying the um, drunk elephant, they're buying, I don't even know the names of all these things, they're buying all these things. And they come into my office and they're doing so much. They're doing stick, you know, six uh, skincare steps for mild acne, for anti-aging. And I'm like, you're 14 years old, you know, you have so much collagen. You're, you know, this is the time to really teach good skincare. So for me, the trend has been, teaching kids like it's so i've also learned you know it's just like anything else you're a mom you know you have kids if you tell them no what happens they're going to do 10 times the opposite so yeah. i kind of say okay great you like skincare you want to do it okay let's come up with a healthy medium let's find what products that are great that are safe that are not going to harm you that you can use to help maintain your skin so we talk about things like niacinamide we talk about things like hyaluronic acid we talk about things like glycerin you know vitamin c i don't like for you know pedi pediatric patients to use because that can cause acne flares and can induce acne so we're going to stop that retinoids and retinols are great um, especially if you have acne. So I'm like, listen, if you want to talk about acne and anti-aging and scarring, let's add in a retinoid. So I think the trend is we have an educated audience, which is great. We have kids that take interest in their health and skin, which I love. So for me, instead of saying no, which a lot of people want to do, I change the conversation and say, okay, let's find a healthy medium. Okay. We'll, we'll engage your interest, keep your skin healthy, and still make it fun for you to do. And still you can do some of the trends that are worthy of doing. Slugging is great, you know, um, or if you want to do a lot of hyaluronic acid, like when kids use hyaluronic acid, I'm like, keep going, go for it. You know what I mean? All we're doing is hydrating the skin. So I think the conversation becomes recognizing the trends and make sure there's nothing harmful. So what, 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 what's harmful is the at-home treatments. So kids are coming in, they're putting on who knows what, aspirin, baking soda, mixing it with water, you know, dish soap for little acne <laughs> spots, and they're getting chemical burns. There's oh a girl God. Yeah, there's a girl recently who used an expired um, salicylic acid product on her face, and she broke out in second degree chemical burns. So, you know, the conversation really has to be healthy skin prevention, which is what I preach. And education. You you said it. I'm going to pull this audio and make my nine-year-old listen to this. Now, with your focus on men's aesthetic and prejuvenation, uh, we have about a minute and a half left. What preventative measures do you recommend to your patients to maintain that healthy skin as they age and mature? My male patients don't want to wear sunscreen because they don't think that they go outside. And I'm like, you live in Arizona, you leave your house every day, I can see it in your skin. So <laughs> sunscreen, sunscreen, sunscreen. For men, simple. Sunscreen, moisturizer, and if I can get them to use a retinol, great. Those are three simple things for men that I think make a huge impact. Because men usually are exfoliating every day when they're shaving and doing all these things not knowing that they're doing that. So for me, I don't care about exfoliants. It's just sunscreen, moisturizer, retinoid. Love it. Now, future of laser technology, looking towards the future, how do you see laser tech evolving in the field of dermatology? Are there any emerging laser treatments or technologies that you particularly are excited about? You know, there's a lot of AI that's going on right now. So that's really interesting. I think we're going to have a lot of devices that are going to be smarter about recognizing what are safe treatments on the skin. So I think, you know, these uh, these lasers are going to have built in like um, almost parameters and built in t sensors to see if that's a safe treatment for patients with different skin types. So I think that's what I think is on the horizon. So I think that's something cool to watch out for. In terms of technologies that emerge, I give it at least five years before I make a claim. But I think the trend in the future is going to be a lot of ultrasound technologies, um, which are becoming very popular. Um, and I think that that's going to be, you know, the next wave of non-invasive um, skin tightening treatments. You said it. You're right on the money and you are 
indeed expert on the microphone. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was such a pleasure chatting with you. You're so full of knowledge and you're easy to chat to. Thank you so much for having me. That was our Going Deep segment brought to you by CO2 Lift. That was Dr. Corinne Lal, double board certified dermatologist. You can check him out on the gram at Sir Derms a lot. You're listening to a moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by CO2 Lift. As we age, our skin loses moisture and elasticity, causing wrinkled skin. You can reverse this aging process with CO2 Lift. CO2 Lift utilizes the powerful benefits of carbon dioxide to lift, tighten, and regenerate your skin. This simple, painless at home carboxy therapy treatment is scientifically proven to reverse the aging process. You will see reduction in wrinkles, increase in luminosity, and improve pigmentation, sagging, skin tone, and radiance. For more information or to order CO2 Lift, go to CO2 Lift lift.com.